All right, I got the parts laid out in the order we're going to install them onto the compression assembly. We will start by installing the red subvalve first, and we'll do that by applying some Loctite to the threads. You're welcome to use blue, orange, or red. Um, we personally like to use orange here. It has the strength of red, while it has the removability of blue, meaning you don't need to use heat to remove it, but it still holds fasteners really, really well, especially for our application and the size threads that we commonly see in suspension parts. Also, be sure to verify that the threads are clean on the free piston shaft. Let's begin by applying Loctite to the threads. Not a Loctite needs to be needed. This isn't a high tension part and it is a pretty big thread so we can apply a pretty good torque to it as well when we tighten it down. You can leave all the shims on the subvalve assembly. We have an O-ring holding it all together and we're going to use a 22 millimeter wrench for these flat sides in order to torque it down. Now that that is seated, we can tighten it down the rest of the way with our wrench. Excellent. So as you can see, once this seated, we did about a half revolution turn more of a torque and this thing is good to go. We can double check it one more time for OCD people like me. Mm, perfect. Now our next step will be adding on the remaining pieces. We'll begin by removing this O-ring. This is no longer used. Now we're going to install our piston. The side with the recess faces up. The side that is flat is going directly on our shims. Perfect. Next comes our check plate. Next comes our check plate spring. This installs into our check plate washer and it installs like this. Cool, make sure to line everything up and not to capture the edge of the shim while installing that because this washer fits into the recess of that piston. And now you can see we have some threads left and it is just about the perfect amount that matches how tall our nut is. So now we're going to verify that our nut has clean threads on the inside. There's no oils inside of there because next we're going to apply a layer of Loctite to that and then torque down our nut. Excellent. The Loctite has been applied. This brand is by Permatex. You can get it on Amazon or you can also get it at AutoZones and O'Reilly's. The nut uses a 17 millimeter wrench. And I like to use my fingers first to verify our washer is in place and seated. Perfect. And now we can tighten everything down. So this nut has bottomed out. So we're gonna to torque it down. Excellent. So as you can see, we got about a quarter turn of torque out of this. So again, the wrench started here and we ended about here. You can, and we can just double check it one more time for our OCD. Mm, perfect. So again, we snug the nut all the way down, then using our wrench, we turn this a quarter turn of tightness. So now we know this is Loctite 
and torques down, and our sub valve is locked tight and torqued down. All right, guys, the compression assemblies have both been built with the new sub valves on there. Our next step is going to be modifying the mid valves. What we need to do is we need to start by removing this rolled thread at the very top. And the way we do that is by grinding that down to where it is flush with the nut. So you can see on this side, it has not been done yet. And on this one, I've already done so. If we look up close, you can see that we've ground it down just the very top. So it's flush with the nut now. So that way when we remove the nut, it'll come off easy without any deformed threads. There's a few ways you can grind the tip off of that. Here at JBI, we have a grinding wheel and we just spin the rod as we go against it. I'll show you a demo of how we do it in just a bit. But um, if you got a sander, a file, really anything you wanna use to grind that nut and grind the post flat to the nut in order to uh, safely remove that. As you can see, the top of the post has been grounded flat to the nut. And we have now mounted the cartridge rod inside of the vise where the two flat parts are. So now we're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench and remove this top nut along with the mid valve piston assembly and shims. Okay. To remove the 10 millimeter nut, we'll use the wrench and unthread it from the top. Now with the nut off, just set that aside. Here I have a small Allen T handle that we're going to use to keep everything in order. Grab here at the bottom and slide everything up. So here's our piston assembly. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna put our nut back on because if you can see on the back of this thread, it is raised a little bit and we're gonna smooth that out. Here's another angle of the top of our thread. So we have our nut back on. Now I'm gonna use a small jeweler's hand file to just get off this top little ridge piece. And once that is smooth, when we unthread our nut, that is gonna chase the threads to ensure the threads are square and perfect. Awesome, now that's looking perfect. We can remove our nut now, and that is gonna make sure that these threads chase and come out perfect. So now we've successfully, successfully moved the mid-valve piston assembly. 
We have lots of threads to utilize still, and we have a very thick nut too. So when we go to reassemble this, we can safely and securely get everything tightened back down.